welcome everyone to this celebration of Holy Mass. I'm just so happy to be connected with you out there in Cyberland and uh, so happy to be part of a community that gets together and prays every day. This is powerful. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. Well, there's a lot more than two or more here. So we welcome Jesus and we lift up our intentions and all sorts of special intentions. If you know anybody that's been struggling from coronavirus in particular, uh, raise that person up to the Lord right now. I know I have a couple of people in my mind that I'm lifting up that I know personally uh, from other states, and not locally. But uh, lift these people up to the Lord right now. And the, what other intentions? Who else do you want to pray for? Along with your intentions, I also have for the intentions for this Mass, James Dugan, Bob Egan, and Eric Nielsen, Herb Rude, and Charles Persinger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life and the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ, our High Priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter, the apostle, said in reply, We must obey God rather than man. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of all of them, the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me says the Lord. Blessed are they, those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. The fifth joyful mystery, the finding of Jesus in the temple. What a wonderful mystery to meditate upon. Uh, Jesus surely did not mean to cause anxiety uh, in the hearts of Mary or Joseph, but he did. Can you imagine thinking your son was with you in a caravan and then looking for him for three days? I'm glad they went to the temple and they found him there listening and asking questions to the doctors of the day, the Pharisees, and then the teachers, the wise men of the day. He, was, he had a heartfelt interest in religion and knowing his, his roots and knowing Judaism. And he was learning from them. And they were also astounded at him because he had all these incredible insights, you know, and just, and, and was pretty much amazing. And the truth is, though, we have to realize that Jesus, as it says in, in that particular gospel, it says that he grew in wisdom and in grace. He didn't just, you know, come into this world and have it all. It's not like the two-year-old Jesus was saying, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live forever. I don't think the two-year-old Jesus was saying things like that. I just think he was saying things more like, Mom, can I have a cookie? Right? He was a normal little guy growing up with all the normal little things. But we know about at the age of 12, that's where he started to really come into an awareness that, that even though he loved uh, Mary and Joseph, and it does say in that passage later that he did you know, humbly and, and, and lovingly obey them, um, he loved them. But he knew that he had, at that point, as a 12-year-old, he was in that sense that I have a relationship with the Creator Father, with the Father. And he said, don't you know I have to be in my father's house? In other words, don't you know I have to be up about my father's business? So already, he was already putting, following the will of the father and being in connection with God the Father, his father, as number one priority in his life. Later on, he'll say that to do the will of my father is my food. I've only come to do the will of the father. That's everything. There's nothing more important to me than doing the will of the father. And so, uh, and so Jesus uh, teaches us today uh, very clearly. He has, a, you know, he has a profound relationship with the Father, and he has a, an awareness of his divinity. The truth is, Jesus, at that point, did not have a man-pleasing spirit. He wasn't even interested in pleasing Mary and Joseph. He got rid of the man-pleasing spirit, and he had only one spirit. I want to please God. Of course, God said, obey Mary and Joseph. And so he was pleasing. But, he, but ultimately, he was doing it to please God the Father. He got rid of the man pleasing spirit and said, I have to have only one. I only have to please one and be obedient to one, God. God. And, uh, and so we see in the gospel today, you know, Jesus' profound relationship with the Father. You know, he, everything he did was with the Father. I think we get that point right now. But then as disciples, we have to imitate that. Oh, the religious leaders were so mad at the apostles, at Peter and the apostles for, for professing and proclaiming Jesus and blaming them for the, his blood, you know? And, and they said, knock it off, stop preaching about Jesus. And Peter and the apostles said, um, sorry, uh, we don't have to obey you. We have to only obey God. And so that's really what true holiness is. You know, you can have all sorts of holy and pious feelings, but 
when push comes to shove, the bottom line is this, are you being obedient to God? That's it. If you want to tell if somebody's holy, are they doing the will of God? That's it. Jesus said, not everyone who cries out, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father. So we intensely pray for that. I want you to think about that. Are you doing God's will? Pray, is it God to the best of my ability? I know I want, I, I intend to do your will. I'm going to do the, your will to the best of my ability. Help me to see where I'm not doing your will. Help me to follow the teaching of the church in faith and moral. Help me to be guided by something greater than myself to your glory and honor and to holiness for the church and for me personally. Together we join our voices as we turn to the Father in complete faith and trust to present our needs. For the church and her leaders, may God's grace fill them with strength and enthusiasm in spreading the Easter message and doing the will of the Father in imitation of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For those in positions of authority throughout the world, may the Lord guide them in the ways of peace, justice, and conflict resolution. We pray to the Lord. For those burdened with physical, emotional, or mental pain, may God's loving grace heal them. And at this time, I ask that you would bring anybody that you might even know who's struggling with the coronavirus to the Lord. Let's just lift them up silently for a while. For their healing and restoration, we pray to the Lord. And for all of us gathered in prayer, may the Holy Spirit help us to focus our hearts on embracing his word and nurturing our lives with faith and doing the will of the Father. We pray to the Lord. For all of our brothers and sisters who have died, may God welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for the deepest prayers of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we ask that you would hear these prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly here. And we thank you for giving your entire self to us. We accept you into our heart and into our lives, into our entire being. And we give our hearts and our lives back to you, our entire being back to you. Bring us into that holy communion, that holy union with you. And through our union with you, bring us into complete union with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, into the beautiful embrace of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Once again, so great to uh, have you join me at this Mass. Uh, I just feel like I have a full church right now, and that's just awesome. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be here as well, live streaming at noon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.